Hi, I'm Millie Tanner, I'm 22. I do track cycling in the sprint discipline and I'm from Devon. I was born in Devon and then pretty quickly we moved to America. Um, my brother was born and came back to Portsmouth for a bit, um, a little bit in Scotland, a bit, a little bit here, there and everywhere to be honest. Because my dad's in the military, we've moved around quite a lot like that. So when I was little, I, yeah, I think any sport I was into, um, you know, I definitely try my hand at anything. But um, I loved netball and I loved athletics. I loved swimming as well. I think that was something that started off just, you know, my mum wanted us all to learn how to swim. It then became, oh no, I actually want to carry on doing this and I actually want to get better and I, I had a bit of a passion for it. So yeah, I kind of pursued swimming, but I, I stayed with netball for a long time. I really liked the social aspect of netball. I think um, I went to boarding school and with the main aim of, of swimming, I, I really wanted to kind of pursue that. But really looking back, I was, I was quite naive really. Um, everyone who swam there was, was a lot better than me. I was kind of coming in at maybe, I maybe make a few events for county level, um, but that was on a good day. Um, and I kind of realised that by the end of school, so maybe like upper six, I realised, you know, I was kind of plateauing and things just weren't quite moving in the direction that maybe my friends were or I wanted it to. I wanted to be a GB athlete. I wanted to have that flag on my t-shirt. I wanted to represent my country. I wanted to be the best. You know, I wanted to have my family shout for me as I'm doing the best I can on, on TV. But I guess I didn't really know what sport it was going to be in, <laughs> which sounds crazy, but I think I always knew that swimming was never really, um, necessarily going to be the avenue to take me there. I think as soon as I kind of got into the Discover Your Power um, program, I then thought maybe this could happen in this in this kind of way. I think I was just at school, I got this email that came through and it said Discover Your Power and it had these pictures of Chris Hoy, um, Casey Marchant. I remember just thinking oh, I'll never be as good as that. I will never do things like that and you know it, it almost makes me a bit sad to think now that I thought so little of myself but I think just naturally you never think you're going to be as good as these people you see on TV. And I kind of just let the email just just go. Um, I went to training that night. My coach kind of said, oh, did you see that email? It's like, yeah, but I just don't think I'll be good enough for that. Like, don't worry about it. Crack on. Let's go. And he's like, no, no, I think you should look into it. I think that's kind of up your street. Um, just kind of gave me a bit of a nudge. So I filled it in um, and really didn't didn't think anything of it. I didn't want to get my hopes up. And then I remember I was sat uh, in our school library and I got an email to say I'd got through to the phase one. And yeah, phase one was loads of generic tests, um, things you can't really train for, things that are quite natural, which I think is, is good in either way. You, you feel like you haven't missed out because no one's been getting a bit of an edge on you. They've been practicing. I then got an email to say, you know, British Cycling are interested in your scores. And again, that was a really exciting prospect. Yeah, I went to the British Cycling um, testing first kind of phase. And again, I was I was really nervous. I didn't really know what to expect. I'd never even seen a velodrome. I couldn't tell you much about the sport. I still remember how I felt looking at the track for the first time. And it definitely was was weird. You know, the bikes don't have brakes. The track is crazy high, crazy steep. It was a really, really fun experience, but it was so different to anything I'd ever done before. I can't remember where I was. I was away and I got this, got this call and I, my heart just started going like 100 miles an hour, I got butterflies in my stomach and I thought this could this could be it. And yeah, the pathway manager at the time um, asked me to join the programme and I don't think I realised like the day-to-day -day of being a full-time athlete, how incredible that is and, and what that meant for me. But yeah, it was such an exciting period and, and moving on to British Cycling was, was incredible. You know, the support you have and I was literally less than a year's like been on the track, six months I'd done this little, the little programme. So I was a properly a baby of the sport and I just I just tried to soak it up as much as I could. But also they saw something in me that, that maybe I necessarily didn't see myself, but I just put my trust in other people. Yeah, day to day being a full time athlete is I guess everything I wanted it to be. You know, you, you train sprint cycling specifically, you know, you do your effort as hard as you can. Um, you come off, you analyze the video that's been that's been filmed for you. You look at the data, so all the timing systems. Um, again, there's cameras full front and on, side on, um, you know, look at your aerodynamics. You can ask your mates, how was that? How did that look? Ask the coach. Um, the coach will kind of say how, how things were looking for them. Um, you know, there's so much you can analyze and there's so much you can come off and, and look to improve on the next one. Um, you know, give it your everything. And then you come off, 
go get a massage, go see physio, go to the gym. Again, like state-of-the-art equipment, coaches, again, the feedback's just exactly what you need it to be to improve. The environment that we train in is something that I don't think you could find in many other countries. You know, there's six or seven of us that could really push for a, for a World Cup team um, and push for, a, push for a medal. And for me personally, I, you know, that goal is is Paris. You know, I want to be on that top step in Paris. And, you know, it makes me smile saying it because I think there's only been in the last year that I really believed it could happen. You kind of realise that actually, yeah, maybe these guys might be right. For me, riding with that flag on my back means so much more than I think, you know, I, I could describe. And you really are representing your country. You're representing everyone at home. You know, your parents, your friends, your family. You want to do them proud. And, and especially when you're in team events, I think there's something really special about you and your best mates doing absolutely everything you can to bring home a medal for, for the country. And Olympians and successful people aren't born that way. You see these gold medalists and you think they were born like that and they were just meant to be, you know, that standard forever. It's just destined to be. When actually you meet these people and you train with them and you compete with them and you realise that they are human and they just work so hard and they want it so bad and they are just like you and me.